Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! While the OBR is clear that it cannot predict the deal the UK will strike with the EU, its current view is that the referendum decision means that potential growth over the forecast period is likely to be 2.4 percentage points lower than would otherwise have been the case. Mr Hammond said he now needed to bust apart his predecessor's promises on borrowing. In view of the uncertainty facing the economy and in the face of slower growth forecasts, we no longer seek to deliver a surplus in 2019-20. Today's numbers show borrowing continuing to be high. The deficit persists. It's £122 billion higher over the Parliament. And the Office for Budget Responsibility helpfully spells out it thinks that nearly £60 billion of the extra debt is due to the impact of Brexit. The squeeze has not been lifted from the poor. The screw of the welfare cap has not been turned off. This has simply made a brutal regime slightly less brutal. We've had a month of briefing from the party opposite on those people who are called just about managing the jams. To the party opposite, these people are just an electoral demographic. To us, to us, to us, they're our friends, our neighbours and the people we represent. Let us first of all answer the question posed on Jonathan's programme. Um, the way it was put, why are the poor still paying for the mistakes of the rich? This is your response to the autumn statement. Let's go first of all to Paul Mayer, who's calling us from Shetland. Good afternoon, Paul. Yes, good afternoon, Anita. Hello there. What did you want to tell us, Paul? Well, my wife and I are pensioners. We're in our late 60s, early 70s, and we're absolutely sick and tired of hearing about the jams. We're sick and tired of hearing about the re-moaners and the moaners. Now, my wife and I are on a very small income as compared with most people. We're on less than £12,000 a year. And I just wonder where all these jams are. Now, we, we, we've done the right thing. We're very streetwise. We, came, we come from an era when people were thrifty. We don't buy things because we want them. We buy them because we need them. And we, we've, we've got our electricity bill down. We've got all our u utility bills down because we've switched. We haven't got expensive sub subscription television paying maybe five or six hundred pounds a year. We, we've actually saved close to twelve hundred pounds a year because we're thrifty. And I'm absolutely sick and tired of hearing all these moaners and groaners out there saying, oh, it's never been, it's not good. Hang on a minute. Harold Macmillan said we've never had it so good. And I've got to tell you, We've never had it so good, and I call that for everybody. Look, mm. we need to look after the infirm, the sick, and the disabled. But, crikey, we, 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 everybody is a lot better off than they were 100 years ago or 50 years ago. So when you hear very real examples which are, which are conveyed by people on this programme in the past, people who say, look, I just don't know how I'm going to meet the rent next month, or people who say, you know, I'm having to go to a food bank this month. I'm working, but I'm just not meeting those bills is your message to them look just that to pull up your socks or i mean are you disbelieving what they're saying what's your attitude to them i would say pull up your socks get real be thrifty don't buy things that you don't need um if you don't need them don't buy them and never get yourself into debt and let's face it with with all these uh, these institutions that lend money to people on payday loans uh, people that have to we never had food banks in the past this is ridiculous. Right, well, let me um, put, can I put this to you? I mean, uh, some may say you are uh, part of the, you're in the jam because, you know, you said, what, 12,000 a year is your annual income, is that right? That's about right, Right, yes, okay, so it's only anyone, yes. I mean, it's a, it's a nebulous definition, it does keep shifting, but the last I read was it's 50 people or households on 50,000 or less are, are in the jam layer. Now, it, there has been much talk lately, Paul, about this triple lock on pensions and the fact that that may have to be unlocked in the future if we have to deal with this, this black hole in our public finances that, that well, faces Well, if we out. needed money, I'd go down to the local supermarket and get a job set, uh, stacking shelves at my age. It wouldn't worry me. I'm right. quite fit. My wife has just had cancer, and we actually went to the CAB, and the, the girl came to the house, and she sat down with us and found out that we actually, my wife qualified 
for £55 a week for attendance allowance. Now, how many of those jams out there have bothered to go to the CAB and check out if they... The government, there are millions of pounds which are unclaimed each year by the gov, from the government. OK, so, so, stay, stay with us. About that? Stay with us. I'm not getting rid of you because I want uh, you maybe to meet Jill Mortiboys, who's calling us from Staymarket in Suffolk. Jill, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Nita. Jill, meet Paul. Paul, Jill. Um, Hello, Paul. You, you just heard Paul saying, look, I mean, basically, no sympathy. Stop going on about the jams. Just pull your socks up and get on with it. What do you say? Well, I say that um, I noticed his particular reference to those who are um, seriously infirm, disabled, um, uh, you know, really on the breadline. Well, they aren't managing. This is the people who are not even managing, actually, the NEMAs, never mind the JAMs. And quite frankly, this government is not helping them. Um, attitudes like Paul's, I am afraid to say, which saying they should be thrifty. These people can't afford their food. Jill, can I ask it's you a no question? It's no good saying there are no food banks in your day. They didn't need to be. OK, let, let him ask you the question, Jill. Yes, sir. Jill, I'd like to ask you a question. It's not, not referring to yourself, but how many of those people that you've just mentioned have a, an expensive subscription to a television... How do thing? I know that, Paul, and how well, do you know it? I can tell you a lot do. I tell you, you what, can tell me because you want to believe it. Free sat and free view. Well, let, know, let, do, Paul, let it, let it, Paul, let it, Paul, let her talk as well. Don't yes. talk over her, Jill. Yes, you, you wish to believe that because it backs your view. That you, I, I am of your generation, back. slightly younger perhaps, but of your generation. I too come from a group that believed in thrift because our parents, um, their generation, had to practice thrift. I don't have a subscription. <laughs> to um, an expensive television. I am relatively comfortably off, but you seem to me to be saying, because we manage, um, you, uh, all you poor people who claim you can't uh, would be able to. Look, we um, to it Shannon, seems to me you're being most... OK, one at a time, one at a time. Let Paul Sorry. come back. Sorry, yeah, go yeah, on. One That's of the all right. reasons we moved to Shetland is because we had a mortgage down south when I was about 60. And I said to my wife, we want to get rid of this mortgage. So we moved. We moved to, and we haven't got a mortgage now. I mean, that's great. Now, if we had a mortgage, mm. our income would have to be about 20,000 plus a year, maybe 22,000 a year. Quite and we'd so. still be one of the jams, presumably. Yeah. Yeah. But we manage on about 12,000 pounds a year. But, but Paul, can I, can I, can I, can I, may I just, may I just cut in? Just, for, I just, I just a question to both of you. Paul, for you, um, the, the fact is, I mean, you're, you're retired. You it, haven't, you haven't got um, kids. Uh, you haven't got the mortgage situation that you once we, had. We, we have grandchildren. <laughs> right. Okay, but but they're not directly your fiscal respons financial responsibility, are they? So... Well, you should see what we have to get <laughs> for Christmas. That's another okay, story. Okay. But my point is, my point is that are you, or, or maybe? I mean, this is this is again, it's another strand of another conversation we sometimes have on this program, when it comes to those sectors that vote most enthusiastically and those don't. Are are, are the pensioner level in touch? with the reality of families who really are struggling, do you think? I think most of them are because they have uh, children themselves who have families. They know what they're, what they're about. We, we have, uh, my grandchildren have, uh, obviously, they have parents. We know that they, they struggle a little bit, and I keep telling them, be more thrifty. Mm. When my son phones me up, he says, I've just bought a new 50-inch TV. Mm. I mean, I said to him, where did you put that? He said, I put that on my credit card. Okay. I said, did you really need it? He said, well, not really, but he said, my wife wanted one. Okay. You know, this is what you, you, I listen to all the time. All right, Paul, thank you very much. And just a quick one, Jill, before I say goodbye to you also. Yes. Um, uh, it was, there's, it was, it was a... Mr. Angry. I think he wants all the moaners to move up to Shetland. Right, well, um, oh, just... I, I'm not sure he's well, well let, Paul, Paul's gone, so he can't reply for himself now. But, but to you, uh, what, what is the solution to I, this? I, I have to say, trying to boil it down, um, is that I think taxes are going to have to go up to help those who are in dire straits, who are affected by delays in benefit um, cuts,
it's uh, the event of desperate. Our local, f- well, one of our local food banks has got to provide a thousand boxes this Christmas. Mm. And I'm afraid it seems to me that Paul is absolutely obsessed with widescreen television. Okay, all right, but, but le- uh, again, I leaving, leaving... One instance sure. where I would say, yeah. I w- don't need one. I've got a very small But television. just putting Paul to one side, and this is my final question to you, because yes, then we're going mo- to move on. No, no, you're not ranting at all. You're very passionate. <laughs> like many of our callers, you have a great passion for what you believe in, and I, and I, I applaud that. Um... Tell me this though. One of the one of the solutions, one of the possible solutions that has been put forward by those sort yeah. of policy wonks who look at numbers, is that there would be more money sloshing around if the triple lock on pensions was done away with. I have to think that probably it should be. Right. Yeah, but I mean that that's because I think, as I told your researcher, because I have um, a professional pension as well as my state pension. Um, I am relatively comfortable. Okay, Joe. people who don't. Mm. Now, how are the likes of Paul, mm. except obviously he's going to go on being really Well, well, well so Paul's, not, right. Paul's not here, Joe, so we'll, we'll, we'll leave no, him I'm out. Sorry. But, but <laughs> it's all right, that's all right. I tell you what, you and Paul, um, just hopefully one day in a supermarket queue somewhere, you'll meet and f- finish off this conversation. <laughs> 